Just when the Constitutional Convention was at the point of crumbling, Benjamin Franklin stood to his feet and advised them what to do. Following his advice, they went on to write the most important documents in our country's history, which have lasted now for more than 200 years. I'd like you to listen to David Barton, an expert on American history, as he relates what Benjamin Franklin told the Constitutional Congress to do to break their gridlock. Listen. Benjamin Franklin was part of the Constitutional Convention, and the records on that Constitutional Convention were really given us by a number of founding fathers who were all writers, but perhaps the best records come from James Madison. James Madison kept meticulous notes on what went on the convention. Now, others kept notes as well, Jonathan Dayton and Yates and others. But James Madison records a very famous speech given by Benjamin Franklin. This is probably the most famous speech of Franklin's political career. It came on Thursday, June the 28th, 1787. In that particular speech recorded by Madison, the convention was really at a crossroads for the convention was falling apart. They had argued, they had fought, they had bickered, they could not agree on anything. And so even the New York delegation had left and gone home in disgust, saying, we have better things to do than fight with you. It was seeing the convention crumble that brought Franklin to this point of making the speech. For here he was, 81 years old, he's in very poor health. He is the patriarch of this convention. He's the old man himself, the old sage, the wise man. And he was in such poor health, they literally had to carry him in and off of the convention floor. But he rose and reminded the delegates of something that they used to do in that very room. Here they were, up against difficult problems they were not able to resolve, and he said, do you remember what we used to do here 13 years ago? For it was in that very room that they'd had the very first sessions of Congress, and Franklin had been a member of those first sessions of Congress. And the records of Congress indicate that they prayed faithfully every morning, every day, and sometimes in multi-hour prayer sessions, and Franklin remembered that. And he said, have you noted that we have not yet started this convention asking God for help? We've gone for days, for weeks. We've not even solicited his aid. And really, we've become fairly presumptuous because we'd seen God's direct intervention so often in the American Revolution that we just assumed he was on our side. But it was Franklin that brought these delegates back to their senses. He told them, he said, in the beginning of the contest with Great Britain, when we were sensible of danger, we had daily prayer in this room for divine protection. He said, our prayers, sir, were heard, and they were graciously answered. He said, all of us engaged in the struggle must have observed frequent instances of a superintending providence in our favor. And have we now forgotten this powerful friend? Or do we imagine we no longer need his assistance? He said, I've lived, sir, a long time. And the longer I live, the more convincing proofs I see of this truth, that God governs in the affairs of man. He said, if a sparrow cannot fall to the ground without his notice, is it probable that an empire can rise without his aid? We've been assured in the sacred writings that except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. He said, I firmly believe this, and I also believe that without his concurring aid, we shall succeed in this political building no better than the builders of Babel. Now here is a founding father, admittedly conceded to be one of the least religious of the founding fathers, calling the entire group back to prayer at the Constitutional Convention. You see, he said, this was a near fatal mistake. We have not yet asked for God's assistance. He said, I am firmly convinced that if we don't get God's aid, we're going to end up just like the Tower of Babel. We can never survive without God's assistance. He said, let's get serious about this. And he made a motion. He said, I therefore beg leave to move that henceforth prayers imploring the assistance of heaven and its blessing on our deliberations be held in this assembly every morning before we proceed to business. Now, this is a speech that led to the establishment of chaplains in the House and the Senate. They knew that this was so important that they must never again forget it. And so chaplains in the House and Senate were not allowed to be members of Congress who might be distracted by their duties and jobs and requirements. No, these were to be people whose only purpose was to get these congressmen, to get the Congress of the United States before God every morning before they went off to business.